1996, I'm eight years old. I'm going to the summer camp for the first time. Instantly, kids label me as an awkward child, and nobody wants to play with me. 1997, I'm nine. Going back again to the summer camp. After a day, other kids think I'm awkward, and nobody wants to be my friend. 2001, I'm 14. Going back again to the summer camp. Other kids still think I'm really awkward. Why did I keep going back? <laughs> this pretty much sums me up growing up as a child. An awkward kid that doesn't feel comfortable in any social situation and says their own thing at their own time. It's been really challenging growing up. I remember many sleepless nights when I would toss in my bed, replay the same conversation in my head over and over again, trying to think for the perfect comeback. And I absolutely dreaded to participate in any group activities or share my opinion with other kids because I knew they either would laugh at me or say it was stupid. So it got so bad that I thought I was just a stupid kid like that and that I was destined for this life and this type of treatment. And uh, wow, what a, what a sad place to be. And uh, needless to mention that I absolutely dreaded any group activities, sport competitions, or taking any leadership roles where I had to um, voice my opinion. Fast forward 10 years. I moved from Russia to the United States. It's been a really challenging journey. I had to build my life from the ground up. I had to make new friends, make money to live, all without the direct support from my family and friends. I now run a growing international web design studio and started the chapter of a nonprofit that helps women to learn how to code. If somebody would tell me 10 years ago that I would achieve so much, I would not believe them. So what happened in those two, 10 years that changed my life? I discovered my hidden superpowers of being a leader, but not the type of leader that I read or was told about before. You see, I always imagine myself a leader as someone who knows it all, this superhuman that has answers to all the questions, feel confident in every situation, and knows how to overcome the challenges. It's really hard to live up to this image, especially as a young adult trying to figure things out. So I thought I will never be a leader, and I buried this dream in the very big corner of my mind. And in the meantime, I was busy building my new life in the United States. I went back to school, I met, I met new friends, but I still felt that something was missing. During all my life, I never had a girlfriend that was into programming like I was. I started coding when I was 12, and uh, I built my first speech when I was 16. But I didn't have friends that I could talk to this about and uh, tell them this, about this new programming language that I learned or this, show them this cool web page that I built. So I decided to go on a mission to meet other women like myself that love programming and uh, who I can talk to. So in 2013, I decided, decided to take a leap of faith and start a chapter of a nonprofit called Girl Develop It. But before I did that, I had to conquer a lot of fears. First of all, um, I wasn't I, I wasn't sure if anyone would be interested in taking, uh, attending the events or taking the classes. Uh, who I was to motivate the people or set the trend, I was never able to do this in my life. And also this was a huge, huge commitment. And I knew that once I decided to take this step and start the organization, there wouldn't be no turning back. So after weighing all pros and cons, I decided to go, go for it. And this turned out to be one of the most life-changing experiences in my life. In March 2013, I scheduled the first meetup ever and waited, and waited. So people slowly started signing up for the group and RCPing for the event. And I was so thrilled and nervous at the same time. I was excited to meet other women like myself who know about coding and who I can talk to about all the geeky stuff that I love. But I also was scared because I had no idea how to run events. I never organized them before in my life. So I had no idea what I'm going to do after I meet this woman. And um, <clears throat> I remember the day when I, when I was running my first meetup, 
I remember I was absolutely terrified to stand in front of those women and talk about who I am and what I was doing. This was definitely the least favorite experience in my life. But going through this challenge helped me to learn about myself and things that I was great at and not so great at. I, I was able to learn that while I was a bit rough when I was talking in front of the group of people, I was pro at more intimate conversations, and I really enjoyed talking to my members one-on-one, -on -one, getting to know them, hearing their story, and sharing my journey with them as well. So slowly, I started discovering my leadership style. Wow, I was onto something huge. I started realizing that the leadership style that I had was not the, the leadership style that I saw in other people, that might have been more outgoing, more extroverted, or more loud. I was more laid back and maybe on the more quiet side sometimes, but I still had a passion for what I was doing, and I wanted to make a change in this world. So, of course, this change didn't happen overnight. Um, I had to work on my leadership style, practice it, deliberately uh, nurturing it in uh, challenging situations. And uh, after some time, I started feeling more and more comfortable going out there and talking to strangers at the events. I, I realized that whenever I go to the local tech events, even though I feel still a little nervous being around a larger group of people, I, I knew I can go and talk to them about this great initiative that I'm starting if I would talk to those people one-on-one -on -one or in the smaller groups. <clears throat> so after the while, I started getting comfortable being uncomfortable. I remember the first ever tech event that I went to. It was uh, about five years ago, and I went to it with my, uh, with my boyfriend at the time, who is my husband now. And uh, I remember I was absolutely terrified of seeing hundreds of people that I never met before in my life. And I had no clue what I should talk to them about, or who they are, or how should they introduce myself. And it didn't help at all that it felt, felt like my boyfriend knew so many people out there, and they would just come up to him and say, hey, I think we follow each other on Twitter. It's really great to meet you in the real life. And I was thinking to myself, wow, he must be famous. All these people know him. How come I don't know any of these people? And what the heck is Twitter, and how do I meet people out there? I had no clue. So I gathered all the courage that I had, and I decided to go up to those scary strangers and start making up the small conversations. And it, that, at that moment, it didn't really matter if I were to become best friends with those people or probably never see them again in my life. More importantly, I started getting myself out of the comfort zone and slowly getting used to it. One year and a few more tech events later, a miracle happened. The strangers stopped being strangers. After going to the different events, I started seeing the same faces and started recognizing people. So, I, I, I started getting interested in their lives and the companies that they were running or projects that they were working on. I would go up to them and just you know, catch up on what's going on with their life and see how, how uh, their project's going on. So strangers turned into friends. And I actually started really enjoying meeting new people and making new connections rather than being terrified from going to the, to, uh, to the events like that. So, this became my new mantra, being comfortable, getting uncomfortable. I even started having fun with it. I started noticing that every time I feel uncomfortable about something, whether having a serious conversation with someone, or finishing the project that was sitting on my desk for a week, or just asking for help, I knew that I had to go and do it, because that, that's why it made me so nervous, because it really mattered to me, and it was pulling all these strings inside of me. So every time I felt that I felt uncomfortable about doing something, I knew that I had to finish it. <coughs> and um, <coughs> um, uh, after after um, after starting Girl Develop It and uh, my web design studio, um, I learned also that. Uh, Having the, this big picture thinking is really great, but also little things often get overlooked, and they can make a huge difference. For instance, as little as saying thank you to someone to 
appreciate the effort that they put into the project that they done for you or the teamwork that they done together. Uh, those things really matter and they can take you a long way. Also, I learned that leaders are not afraid of being vulnerable or admit that they are wrong. But even if you admit that you're wrong, don't just file it away in your head and, or beat yourself up for it. Turn it into a learning experience and uh, analyze it and think when, what you can do better next time or how you can change the situation in the future. Um, <clears throat> so if, if, if I could go back in time right now to meet the younger self, this is what I would tell her. I would tell her that it's okay to be scared of unknown, that while you might still not know what you want to do work-wise or you're not sure what life holds for you, it's okay. It all will work out. Keep learning about yourself and keep learning about the things that you're good at. And the thing is, don't treat mistakes like the end of the world because they teach you about things that don't work. So you can go back and fix those things and do them right next time. And while the future leader still might be sleeping inside of you, go on a great life, life adventure. Have some, have some fun. And the, the right time will come when the, you will uncover your future leadership superpowers. Thank you.